Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. Can we as application developers stop over engineering? I hate to use the term engineering to even describe it, but I'm guilty of it too. Writing clever or generic code that's overly complex, hard to understand, and even harder to change. Here's some of the pitfalls that I see and things that I think about to guide me to a simpler path. This video is brought to you by EventStoreDB, the stream database built from the ground up for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So one of the traps, pitfalls that I think we can fall into is playing the what if game. As developers, thinking about all the different use cases that we're aware of and adding more to them because we gain a little bit more domain knowledge. And then we don't validate those assumptions or those what ifs with the actual business experts or people that we're working with in the domain that have more knowledge about, about that to us. And then they can really tell us, okay, yeah, this is an edge case, but we don't really need to concern ourselves with it. I think we get caught in this trap of thinking that the code that we're writing, the system that we're building has to cover 100% of use cases imaginable. Yes, it's great to ask questions, to validate your assumptions. I always say it's great to even ask bad or seemingly dumb questions because it validates assumptions. But the idea here that you have, we're gonna write a system that covers every possible use case imaginable just really isn't the case. I often think of kind of the 80-20 Pareto principle of really the idea of that 80% of the system and that's being used is probably really represented in 20% of our code. So really focusing on the heart of what the system really is, and that really is where the value lies. Now the second pitfall I think we can fall into, which is kind of the opposite of what I just described, is really we love talking about tech. We love tech, we love programming languages, we love kind of new libraries or frameworks that are coming out and new tech, but we kind of lose sight or if that's kind of off kilter with actually understanding the domain. The reason why we're writing software is to solve business problems. So if you kind of have more of this focus on you really care about the tech side and not really the problems that you're solving in the domain, you're gonna write complicated code because you're purely trying to solve technical problems and not business problems as simple as you possibly can. Now, if you can relate to this, let me know in the comments because I'm guilty of it too, or in the early days of my career is being an application developer, building a system, but somehow writing your own internal library or framework. Like, what are we doing here? I joke is who hasn't written their own ORM or something of that nature, their own web framework? Like, why exactly are we doing this? Especially nowadays where there's so much uh, libraries and open source software, even commercial software that we can pay for that provides a lot of value that we don't need to be doing this. Again, focusing on solving business problems, not technical ones. So another pitfall I think you fall into is not doing enough upfront design. Really understanding, again, the business problems that you're trying to solve and trying to understand how you're actually gonna build this system, especially if it's something completely greenfield as a, as a full system, or even just maybe an individual service. So I'm not talking about big upfront giant waterfall design where you're defining the entire spec. No, it's really about to me, and I've created a video about this, is really understanding the, like the impactful decisions that you're gonna make early on a part of your architecture. So to me, this is a lot about options and giving yourself options, making those key decisions early on that are gonna be low cost options and things that you're gonna implement and the way you're gonna design your system that give you options in the future to evolve your system. So again, not big upfront design, but enough upfront design where you can define and make these key decisions about your options. Dry, don't repeat yourself. I think there's been more and more traction over the last few years kind of talking about it and people really kind of saying how it can lead to complexity. And while I kind of generally agree with most of the sentiment, I think they're missing out on a whole big portion of this that really misses the mark, which is don't repeat yourself per boundary. Be explicit within your boundary. I say this in a bunch of different videos is that you may have the concept of something that does exist in many different boundaries, many different uh, logical boundaries. I always say a product isn't a product when I'm talking about kind of a warehouse or distribution system, meaning that the concept of a product can exist in many different boundaries. So there, I don't want to apply dry because what happens there is you end up with entity services. 
You end up with a, one single concept of a product that belongs in only one particular logical boundary. And that has many different complications that will lead to high degrees of coupling. But there's other forms of dry that I'll illustrate here that can kind of lead you down this kind of negative path of trying to think that two things are really the same. So a different example to kind of illustrate this is that we have a customer and a vendor. So our customer, if we're thinking about accounting, customers related to sales and sales orders and vendors is gonna be related to purchase orders, bills, et cetera. So they're kind of two different things right now. But if we look at them, so they both have an ID, they both have a physical address, they both have a bill rate. We do have some differences because our customer has invoices, our vendor has bills. Um, in terms of methods, they're all very similar here but we can uh, invoice a sales order to um, on the customer side and we can bill a purchase order on the vendor side. So they look very different. There's kind of a small difference, but why can't we just kind of create some more abstract base class that maybe is just represents a company? So that's what I have here. We have an abstract class called company, kind of has the shared common things between the two, the ID, physical address, bill rate, those particular methods. And then I have a customer now that is extending the company and then has the stuff that was specific for it where invoices and then vendor has bills. So everything was just pretty simple, really crud. But all of a sudden we get a new requirement where we need to find kind of a max amount that we can set the bill rate as. So, but our bill rate is kind of on our base class here company. So maybe what we decide to do is we end up creating some abstract method here called max rate that we can use within set bill, uh, set bill rate. So we can get that in amount and see if we're trying to set it to something that's higher than that threshold. So then our customer, we have to implement and override that to get the, whatever the value is. I just have hard coded values here. But we can see now we've kind of added logic uh, more to our bill rate. And this is just kind of death by a thousand paper cuts ultimately <laughs> is you can see how as you start adding more and more logic what happens if anything particular in our base class doesn't really apply to anything that we're derived now from the customer or the vendor is now we get up in this place where we were trying to be very generic for something that really needed to be explicit the idea of a customer and a vendor are very separate things they look the same yes they are physical companies that you're likely, or people that you're billing and um, sending invoices to, but those concepts are very, very different. When you try to get to this place where you try to make things generic uh, in this way, or again, going back to kind of think, thinking about libraries and frameworks and trying to make things generic, they often are, I would say, look at them very closely to see, are they really generic? Or are you trying to merge two similar things together that should be explicit? Now to clarify, I'm not harping on inheritance. That was just the example that I use. I'm not really talking about inheritance per se versus composition, et cetera. I'm not, that's not the debate. Really, I'm just trying to illustrate when you're thinking about something's generic, it may not be generic and making things generic can lead to complexity. So the last thing I wanna talk about is kind of over abstraction and over abstracting things that you don't really need to. So oftentimes there's kind of this general rule of thumb, I guess, where if you depend on a third party dependency, some type of package, that you'll create your own abstraction over top of that as a wrapper so that your application code depends on your own types rather than that third party. And while this can make a lot of sense if you have multiple implementations and not just that third, one third party dependency. And I say that because it isn't this diagram. That's not really how this is. Really what it looks like is this, you have a ton of your code that is referencing uh, in a ton of places, your abstraction. And then sure, your abstraction has a single dependency on that third party dependency. The thing is, is you still have a ton of coupling. Whether you're coupling to your own abstraction or the third party, you still have to deal with all the coupling you have. Especially if your abstraction gets convoluted and starts leaking um, kind of the implementation de details of that third party. So while I was kind of planning this video, I stumbled upon this tweet from Matthias Carlson. I asked him to see if I could add this to the video, which he said, sure, and it hits the nail on the head, is one way to avoid vendor lock-in is to embrace all of it. And that's the thing is that embrace what you're depending on, leverage it, but make sure 
that it's small, isolated, not complicated, and replaceable. So the key thing here is again, coupling, focusing on coupling. If you're making things small, if you're isolating them, coupling, it, they'll be replaceable. There's a lot of circumstances where I, I firmly believe people create abstractions for dependencies that they have where you just simply don't need it. It adds more indirection, more complicated, it complicates more code. It's just purely over engineering. So how do you make things small, isolated, etc.? Focusing on vertical slices and features. Check out some of my other videos on this because I talk a lot about this on how they can really narrow your focus, especially on the dependencies that you're taking. So these are the things that I'm thinking of to kind of prevent me from going down that over engineering rabbit hole. It's striking the balance between understanding what business problems are and technically how we're gonna implement and solve those problems. It's thinking about coupling and abstractions and not really overdoing it and isolating things and not making things generic unless they really are, being explicit. If you enjoy software architecture and design and you want an access to any of the source code that I post, as well as a Discord server, where you can chat with other like-minded developers about software architecture and design, check out the links in the description and how you can join through YouTube and Patreon. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment and please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.